you're gonna love my nuts. What's up guys, Bearded here, and uh, I have a bit of an update for you guys. So I had asked some of you guys how you wanted me to uh, explain this, and you guys wanted a more in-depth explanation. So I have in front of me a timeline of the different events that happened up until now. Uh, I'll try to go uh, as detailed as I can, but without over explaining a whole lot, you know, keep it keeping to the main details and so on. Don't over explain. This is gonna <laughs> this is gonna take a bit. Some of you may have seen me last on YouTube, and then I kind of went quiet for a bit. Uh, and the last thing that I sort of posted, I guess, was a video of me saying that I was going to Europe. I will be away for a while over in Prague. So we start in summer 2018. I was finishing up college through an internship. And at the same time, I was working a job at a hardware store. I didn't like the job at the hardware store. I left and then I wanted to focus on streaming and videos and whatever. But I also just wanted to finish my internship. And so I finished up the internship, graduated college. But just as I was finishing it up, I actually met someone online and things got pretty serious. And uh, then was like, hey, I have some spare money. I'm going to come visit you. Uh, after the internship in uh, the fall of 2018, uh, I successfully graduated college. They just wanted me to redo something. I can't quite remember. And I decided that come February, I was going to go visit that person. So February came around. Uh, I went over there and we met. We had a great time. I was only planning on staying for two months. And I was planning to continue stream and record for videos. I did a little tiny bit of recording, which I think I ended up deleting the footage, but no videos or streams were necessarily done at the time. So yeah, it was the end of winter 2019. Like I said, I was planning for two months. Next thing I knew, she was asking me to look for jobs just for fun. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Then I ended up actually getting an interview. I went there, they loved me, and it seemed like a dream job. And I thought, this sounds great. And you know, we can live off of this. Sadly, I didn't know the uh, currency that well. So I didn't fully understand uh, the amount, I guess, even though it sounded like a lot. And yeah, in the end, I ended up getting the job. And I was like, well, that changes everything. I have a job. So in the end, it was suddenly decided that I was staying. Uh, and we, at the time we were staying with her parents. So yeah, I decided to try it out, see how it goes. I thought, you know, I went to college for this exact sort of job. It was a, a, a video game company, mostly mobile. And they, they were kind of like doing contract work for a company that was based in Korea, but it seemed like they were acting as if the company from Korea owned this place. But anyways, so they were like, okay, you're gonna work for us on probation. And then after that, you can decide if you want to stay and you can, you know, stay for good, whatever, and you'll get some benefits. And the benefits sounded amazing too. And I, I worked there, I think I worked there for a month. So it's like about a month later, the the girl that I went to see, she decided she wanted a, a dog and she, but she wanted a puppy. And she said she wanted it for uh, sort of like an emotional support dog, but it was basically gonna be our pet. And I thought, sure, why not? We don't have a pet. Considering how things were getting serious and I was staying there, I was like, okay, well, I probably want to bring Callie over at some point. I spoke with my dad and he was actually like getting Callie ready. Like, I think we, he actually put a, a tiny, tiny ass chip in her that they, uh, you go, you go to the vet and they kind of just like put it under their skin. Uh, so if she was ever to get lost, uh, they could scan that and they'll get some information but anyways but it seemed like the more time went by and we had we had this one dog uh it seemed like she was saying well uh, i don't think the dog's gonna like your cat and i said well that's kind of normal of most animals they don't like new members being added to the family i guess uh and then of course she was talking about the plane ride and she was saying your cat's too old she's not gonna make it or she might not make it um but i was thinking like callie's fine at least from what i know but uh, I, I, at the time, I wasn't really thinking as well that Callie does have uh, this thing where when she gets too excited or something major has changed, uh, she kind of goes through this period where she has trouble going to the bathroom, but then she gets fine after that. But anyway, so it was kind of like I, f I felt weird how we were going for a dog, a dog, 
but I wasn't allowed to have my own cat over there. Summer 2019 came around. My three month probation was about over. I was thinking, great, you know, uh, I'm actually gonna like f have a full full time job here and out of probation, full time or full time, uh, full benefits and whatever. So, uh, but at the time the company was kind of being weird. Like we, we were trying to do work but the headquarters wasn't giving us anything and it seemed like they were paying us just to sit around. Uh, there was some shit that went down with that and then I, the last day of my probation I got called in and I thought, oh, I'm gonna sign the papers. They basically wanted me to sign papers to leave. And I was, they weren't like, the people, I don't blame the people at the office that I was working at. They were like from the area, they weren't part of headquarters. But uh, they were upset. They didn't want to let me go. They liked who, uh, they liked the job that I was doing there. They wanted to keep me, and they felt absolutely horrible because they essentially promised me a job. But I went, no, it's fine. I'll just sign the papers and leave. So I, I didn't know what was going on though. Like, it just I knew it was just something that had to happen. But anyways, uh, I lost the job. They they let me go essentially, and then I think. I forgot to sign a paper or something, so I had to go back like a week later. Within that week, they shut down the company. So uh, there's that, I guess. And even though, uh, I think it was just before that I had lost the job, she wanted to get another dog, but she kept getting emotional looking at pictures over this dog and uh, she wanted to rescue it. It was like a year or a year and a half old or something. I think it had an abusive uh, previous owner because that dog was weird. Like. It would lash out, but it would lash out in fear, apparently. Yeah, it was an uncontrollable dog, and he was always getting into, like, he'd get into the trash, even though I kept trying to secure it. He would, uh, you know, you leave food on the counter, and you, you hear licking around the corner. And I go, and I, I look in the kitchen, and sure enough, he's uh, licking the uh, the food that I had just made for us, right? And we, we were obviously feeding him, but it just seemed like the, any chance he got, he would try and go for that food or the trash. And anytime we saw another dog, he would bark like crazy. But anyways, at that point, we were basically running out of money. And I just kept putting transactions, mainly grocery stuff, on... I was putting it on a credit card, and that credit card eventually maxed out. And I was like, well, fuck, this is, this is bad. My dad was already sort of talking with me on the phone, and he was saying... You know, maybe you should come back and you can continue relationship uh, long distance and whatever. So I said, I, I, I have to go. That, you know, I try to help make the transition easy because we got to move the stuff. I helped her move her stuff back to her parents' place. Basically, we had bought a place. After I got a job, we had bought a place. We were bringing her stuff back to her parents. And then the day, the day after, which was the day I was going to get ready to... Uh, like, you know, buy the plane tickets and whatever. She called me back. She said, are you sure you want to do this? And I said, well, I have to. And I, I said, I, I know you don't like it, but like we can continue the long distance relationship. But she wouldn't take that. And she wouldn't take that uh, as uh, an option. And I said, well, I'm sorry, I got to go. Uh, and then she calls me back again. I can't go because uh, of all the stuff that we've done and whatever. And I basically, I, I caved in and I said, okay, fine. So we, we, I went back to her parents' place, grabbed her stuff. We brought it back to the apartment. And then, uh, after the apartment, oh, sorry, after that, I think I spent like two, two or three weeks trying to find another job. I could not find another job. All the jobs that I was looking at, um, you know, they, they seemed like good jobs that I could work at and they were doable, whatever. Um, but they, all these places, they wanted a certain qualification, like they wanted three years experience or something, right? And even though it said it was a beginner job, uh, but I kept applying and I only got like two responses out of a possible 100 and... I definitely applied for at least 100. I, want, I almost said 150, but I don't think I applied for that many. But uh, only two places responded. One place called me and said they just wanted more information so uh, to decide if I should go for the interview. And another one called me to get more information. And then they said, if you get an interview, we'll call you back. They, they never called back. I did never got a job. And then she, she tried to get a job. It was like small retail jobs. One was uh, at a pet store and then she worked at a different pet store. And then she worked at a, uh, a, a like essentially a GameStop store for uh, a while. You know, it wasn't the greatest jobs, but it was doable. And, uh, 
but we weren't able to keep up with the bills and it, it was a lot of it went towards the dogs you know something would happen oh we gotta take them to the vet oh they need this shot oh uh food basically all our money was spent i was between a hard hard between a rock and a hard place because i was like we got all these bills we gotta pay i still have my student loans i gotta pay for uh the government of canada it was just you know i i didn't know what to do it was making me go insane the other thing af after the first time that i i tried to leave um uh, her family turned on me so hard like i mean it makes it was kind of understandable because of their family but it's like her brother th threatened to uh he didn't say this directly to me he said it to her uh and then she told me but supposedly her brother wanted to punch my face in the next time he saw me um and because you know they they would just randomly show up at uh the the apartment i was like well you know they could just randomly show up at any time so i did anytime they showed up i was in the next room if they wanted a drink or food or they want to ask me a question i'd come in but i wouldn't stay for more than 10 minutes so basically we got into the fall of 2019 i think what it was is my, my dad called me and he said that it's it's not healthy i need to come home and i agreed with him i wanted to and i was almost like i just i couldn't fully let go and just leave uh, but I basically just needed to, I needed to come to the conclusion, uh, that I'm not supposed to be there and just leave because the, the way things were like, I, I was put, I was, I was making my life miserable essentially. Uh, as well over time, I tried to stream a little bit here and there, but the, it was like, it was as if I was starting all over again as a brand new streamer and it was a bit rough. Um, and because of the heat over there my and no air conditioning my pc was overheating a lot so there was that sometimes she would keep coming home with certain games or like pop figures or something i i, I there was one point i said to her you can't keep spending our money like this because we, we actually had a joint bank account she said that she was the one working and that it was her money not mine and so after that i just went okay well i guess i actually really am going home then we, i spoke with my dad and we had these plane tickets that were, uh, it was kind of like in-store credit for plane tickets. So we were able to redeem the exact same plane tickets for the same destination. They were coming up very soon or something. And I asked my dad to take care of it. And then he managed to get the plane tickets for the very next day. So I had to break the news to her and, uh, she was not happy at all. She was furious with me. So basically come November. 2019 I returned home I left there and uh you know I, shit, I thought shit was gonna hit the fan but it didn't really I just I came home uh she messaged me about you know I, I there was like a door that I had to break in and I accidentally broke the door because I like basically locked myself out and couldn't find a way back in so the door had some damage to it and I was like yeah I'll help pay that back as well as the uh last month's rent or whatever uh, I think I was going to pay half of the rent so that she could stay there for a little bit and then move her stuff uh, slowly back to her parents. That was taken care of, but then she asked, she said she was adding a charge for like gas money or something. And uh, I just went, whatever, I took care of it. And then she messaged me, I think it was like a couple weeks, three weeks later. I can't remember if it was like the gas bill or the, the heating bill or something. It came in and she can't afford it. And I said, well, that sucks. And she said, well, aren't you going to help me? And I said, I can't afford that. I said, my dad's not paying anymore because my dad was actually the one that fronted the money to pay off what was owed already. She, of course, freaked out and then we blocked each other. So yeah, basically the end of November came around. I went to my cousin's wedding. I met up with some, some family that I haven't seen in a long time. We laughed, we drank, I smoked weed. Um, then we came home after about a week and... I try to continue streaming and uh, at considering where I started when I came back to now there it's it's improved quite a bit and I'm actually I'm actually very thankful for uh, everybody that supported me throughout uh, these times of course those who come come by the channel when I'm live and just come by like even when people that just come by and say hi and then they lurk like I it's still support so I love it so end of winter 2020 
I continued streaming, like I said, and then I wanted to get back into video. So I was sitting there going, okay, uh, I went and bought a camera. Then I got like audio gear, but the audio gear didn't work. So I had to order different audio gear. And uh, I tried that audio gear and it seems to work, but the cameras or the camera, the mic seems way too sensitive to wind. So doing things outside would be impossible. So I need to find like a mic that hooks onto the top of it or something and I can put like a, uh, I think they call it a dog or a cat or something. Uh, it's like the fluffy cover for the microphone. Like this, this is just kind of like a pop filter, but this thing, it's like, it's got actual fur and it's really large, but anyways. Um, and there are just a few other minor setbacks. And then I kept thinking about, God, I haven't done a video in all this time. It took me a while to like get back into it and even when it came to streaming they were like oh i need to change this and it was just a matter of clicking a few things moving a picture here to there changing the audio volume a bit it would take me weeks to just do simple shit. uh it still kind of does i mean there's still some things like i i have a trello board to do stuff both personal and for uh, business for streaming and videos and it's like it's, it's almost like i let the list build up a bit and i'm like that looks too long and then i shrink it a bit but I still don't do some of the stuff. But anyways, just how I am, I guess. So come spring 2020, uh, of course, COVID. My province, Nova Scotia in Canada, uh, we didn't fully go into lockdown, but it was recommended, you know, people stay home, careful going to the stores and whatever. We had very few cases compared to, to a lot of hotspots. Um, we weren't really ever a hotspot anyways, but it seemed like most of the cases as well were either happening in the city of Halifax, which is to the northeast of us, or directly north uh, towards the top of the province. And I think recently, like today, as when I am recording this, uh, there was like one new case or something, but that there hasn't been a new case in a couple weeks. Just before that, there was a bad situation the next province over, but for us, we haven't had much. You know, I'm trying to push through it. I, I wear a mask every time I go to the store. Every time I see that they su they supply hand sanitizer, I, I go for it, you know. So a couple months passed, and then we decided to get chickens, and uh, we grew them. Uh, there was a little incident where I think it was like, I think they were barely a month old, and uh, there was basically a raccoon attack. It actually, we had six, it actually managed to kill one of them, but uh, it happened in the middle of the night, my dad heard a noise, luckily he, he had his window open, he uh, goes out there, that one was already passed away, and uh, there were two other injured, one of them was bleeding from the head, and uh, the raccoon, which was a fat motherfucker, he, he took off. We've had chickens before as well, with raccoons in the area, and we've never had an attack like this, but anyways... Along with that as well, I went and bought a dirt bike. It is a, it's more of a motocross dirt bike, but uh, I thought, you know, it would be an investment for a different style of content, you know, just me checking out some trails, maybe I discover some things, I can just talk about some random stuff. Then I had the official paperwork, so that was fine. I drove it for a bit, I was keeping up with oil changes and everything and suddenly it just started leaking oil from the bottom right where you drain the oil and apparently um I, I brought it in i brought it in before actually when i first got it i brought it in because there were a few brake issues and i think it needed a new chain and the the he found out there were a couple uh teeth missing from the sprocket so you replace that anyways so I went and got that fixed, but it took him two, three weeks to get it done. Um, apparently he was busy. And then uh, there were... Oh, he, he mentioned the sprocket shit. No, my bad. He, he did the chain and the sprocket, and then regarding the brakes, he said, we're not a Suzuki dealership, and they need special... Uh, it's a, uh, the, the bike needs special parts or something. So I had to find a place where they service these bikes... Uh, so that he could do it and then he did it and I think it was like within a week it was done I brought it back drove it for a bit had some fun with it and then that's when the oil leak started and I noticed that it was knocking kind of louder than when I first got it 
So I had him look at it and it took him forever to look at it. He was saying he was backed up and uh, I guess a lot of people want their bikes fixed. But he he looked at it finally after I called him many times. The last time I called him, when he answered the phone, like it was his daughter that answered and she handed it over to him. She hands the phone to him and he says, what do you want? And I said, well, I'm looking for an update on my bike. You've had it for over a month now and I've had no update and don't know what's going on. And he said that apparently it was a timing issue, but instead of replacing like the whole thing, uh, he's just going to do like a bandaid fix and replace the, the chain and uh, the, the timing chain in the engine. Yeah. And he said that basically all of his orders are backed up because he's waiting on parts for servicing, which I believe because at the same time, my dad had his car go in just to get the uh, power steering replaced. And they've fucked up the delivery of the parts twice, and it took it took so long for the parts to arrive that my dad didn't have to pay anything. Yeah, that's mainly it with the dirt bike. It's still in the shop right now as of recording this, but I hope to get it back soon. As well with that, I officially registered Bearded Kitty Media as a business in my province of Canada. And uh, so yeah, I am actually, like, this was to prove as well to to my mom uh, i am i'm serious about this and this is what i'm going for but she still doesn't really believe in what i'm doing and uh she doesn't believe that it's going to be a sustainable job i guess for me in life so between spring and summer i kind of started to get back into videos but it was mostly clips from uh some of some like random shit that happened during streams and uh they were kind of doing they were doing okay but I just, you know, I was still kind of healing from uh, coming back from Europe and, you know, still trying to figure out shit because I'm like, well, I haven't done all this stuff and I got to do it all, but I want to do this new stuff. And then it's like, I just don't do anything and I just keep putting it off. And so anyways, uh, the videos kind of trailed off. I kept streaming into the summer. Started debating a part-time QA job, and uh, I looked a little bit around, didn't really apply much. I think I applied to like one place and I never got a response. Um, then I started having back problems. It's I blame this chair. It's not the most comfortable chair. I mean, it works, but when you sit in here for hours at a time, you start to like feel, you know, your tailbone starts to feel a little sore. and. Oh, um, it would it would hurt when I'm not in the chair. Basically, I I would go to bed and I'm like, oh, my back's kind of sore, but I would get comfortable. But readjusting in bed was hurting and um, just getting up, bending over. It was it was hurting. And at some points, my my back would lock up. So I don't know what it was, though, at first. So my dad and I went, well, my mattress is 20 some years old because I've had it since I was a kid. It's not like it was dirty or anything either. It was still in good shape. It's just, I could kind of start to feel the springs pushing awkwardly in certain spots. I could tell it was time for a, a new one. But anyways, I uh, we, we went mattress shopping. We got a new mattress and it seemed to fix. And I was like, great. And then it kind of came back uh, like a month later, the back pain. And so I went to eventually went to the physiotherapist and he said that essentially uh, the very last disc in my spine because of the way I'm sitting uh, it is cre it is squeezing in the front and pushing out towards the back he said the main fix was to just take um, regular breaks when I do stream or record and uh, he gave me physiotherapy exercises but they were really just core exercises so uh, he was like just you know once you start to feel better just try to go to the gym and just keep doing the core exercises and then towards the end of summer my grandmother actually got sick it was kind of a scare at first because she actually had to go to the hospital. Like there was something about her foot, blood pooled in her foot or something. And uh, it, it wasn't circulating back up. And so they did some sort of surgery and they were going to put a tube in there. But then they found there was a blockage. And they were expecting that it wasn't a blockage. So I, I don't really like the way the hospital up there works because they just don't. They, they, they seem so incompetent. I don't. Uh, I'm sure they, they, the doctors there actually like know their stuff and work great, but it's just, it's almost like they seem disorganized. But anyways, she got put in a, uh, a home for, uh, 
healing because after the surgery, she wasn't feeling super well. I can't remember what happened. I can't remember if she passed out or something. But her, uh, she doesn't have dementia, but her memory's not all there. And it's like, she'll remember stuff that happened a long time ago, but she won't remember. Like, she's, she still thinks that I'm in college. There was one time I went there and she thought I was still in college. There was another time she actually thought I was still in high school. So there's that. Um, but from what I know, she's been feeling better. But she she got, uh, there was something that she got. She was having breathing problems and it wasn't related to COVID, but uh, it wasn't bronchitis or anything. I can't remember what it was, but it was something that was common when you get older. And uh, I think it had something to do with like water build up or something in your lungs but anyways and she went to the hospital and my mom went up to visit or something and then she left and then she never heard any word after so i, I from what i know she's still alive and doing well but there's been no updates from mainly family and family on my mom's side can be uh depending on who it is can be a bit weird so so now we're we come to fall uh fall hit it didn't last very long here. I swear it lasted like a month. And then it's like, it also hit me. Oh, right. My student loans, that's coming up. So uh, even though the government is giving support, that's helped out a lot. But it's still like, you know, I you run out of that quick. So I'm thinking of um, actually like applying for a part time QA job that I can do remotely. And just, you know, I'm th I'm, I'm lucky enough that. Uh, my dad is allowing me to stay here with him. Not much expense to me, really. I'm basically here for free. So, you know, I still help out with chores and I, I do what I can, but he's been very supportive and uh, has put a lot of uh, his own money into my business and uh, my dreams, essentially. Yeah, so there's basically student loans. That's always in the back of my head. So it's tr that's kind of what's pushing me to finding a way to make enough money to pay off that debt and then I can just sort of keep setting money aside whether it's investing myself or towards my business and uh, I'm still working towards videos obviously there's this one but this is a big one that it's out of the way you know I'll have a big weight off of my shoulders and I'll probably be more easy for me to get back into videos I still feel a bit rusty with uh, video editing but I did uh, go through a lot of my special effects or sound effects and I basically clean them up so that I can literally just click, drag, plop it in the video, and off you go, right? That's the extent of my explanation. Uh, I also want to apologize and just say sorry for essentially letting you guys down with the videos because I really want to keep up on it. It's just a lot of the times editing isn't all exact. Editing isn't exactly my strong suit. You know, I'm I'm constantly trying to better myself, both for quality of content creation and just um, production quantity and capacity, I guess. You know, I don't want to, like, overwork myself, and I also don't want to be super, super lazy. But I, I find half the time, you know, I want to do something, and I say, every month I'm going to do a vlog, and then I do it for a while, and then... There's just one day I don't have any, or there's one month I don't have any footage at all because I just didn't go out there and record. And then I go, well, I guess there's no video this month, and then I just keep putting it off. I know this video is more boring for you guys, but it is mostly an explanation video. I hope you guys do understand. I, uh, hopefully you guys will be seeing more of me. You can find me over at my Twitch channel, bearded underscore kitty. Yeah, videos, I do hope to continue videos. I just, I need to work on that. I have ideas that I want to do. I actually have like 10 possible video video ideas that I can do. Uh, also, there there are some that might be more rant style, but I don't want to just make rant videos. So it'll be more kind of just like talking about certain topics. They may be more local topics than world topics, but we'll see. But anyways... Uh, I hope you guys did enjoy. Again, I'm sorry. And uh, I hope to continue bettering myself in these coming, coming months. 
But now that I'm back, you know, Callie's doing well, I'm doing better. Anyways guys, feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe, and don't forget to check out my other videos on the channel. So, I hope to see more of you guys in the future, and as always, bye for now. God, I hate this freaking cat.